Fantasy Ed with Jonathan Chan, Kevin Quo, Richard Seville. Hello and welcome to the Fantasy Edge. I am Richard Seville, Fantasy Six Pack Doc Nutton. Joining me shortly, as always, Jonathan Chan of Fantasy Six Pack Doc Nutton and Kevin Paul, also of Fantasy Six Pack Doc Nutton. Uh, on the heels, well, almost the heels, in the fourth quarter of the uh, Monday night football game between the Browns and the Jets, and the Browns currently 23 to 3 against the Jets in a very, uh, a game that sort of put me to sleep, and uh, I was actually a little bit late getting to the podcast, but uh, because I dozed off, which uh, in a game like this, two teams that are actually looking at the Monday night schedule, there's really not a lot of great football out there. But uh, if Monday Night Football uh, schedule isn't what it used to be. Jono, how you doing, my friend? Uh, another week, another week of football. You ready for a, ready to talk it up or down? Yeah, doing pretty good. Um, as I as you introduced me, the Browns just recovered a Le'Veon fumble. So Kevin, good on you. Let's go. <laughs> what are you talking about and a funny half a cold, but otherwise doing good. What about you, Kev? I mean, I guess uh, the Le'Veon. Uh, I take it you own him somewhere. No, I have Browns D and I'm playing against him and I think I'm up I'm up point four now because of that fumble. Um not much uh, not much to say about this game. The I noticed that Chubb was doing fairly okay. Odell was uh lighting it up. Uh, I get, uh, did Odell get a touchdown too? He did. Yeah, so Odell's got one fifty five and a touchdown. So your Browns fantasy yeah, you players are going sure. okay. He's got an eighty nine more touchdown. It's the longest of his career. Really? Wow. Yeah. I'll watch the highlights. Trevor Simeon was hurt in this game, and Luke Fox still in there. Uh, what was the word on Simeon? Did he uh, break his ankle or something? Um, I don't know for certain, but the notification said he suffered an ugly injury, so I can only assume it's bad. Yeah, yeah, I guess it kind of is the story of this game. Really, really bad. Boring to watch. The Jets are uncompetitive. With, in, I mean, they've just got no uh, real offensive line. The way I looked at it, I thought, I mean, there was one blitz on Trevor Simeon before he got hurt. And I'm just looking at this. It, does anybody, is anybody in the offensive line, not one guy could pick up one blitzer? You should be able to pick up one blitzer. What do you think? I mean, one guy, one guy. They didn't pick up one single blitzer. All the guys just, it was like they weren't even there. They just, you know, went, went straight through and sacked uh, um, Simeon. I mean, so I don't know. Yeah, if I mean, their, their offensive line was bad last year and they made some minor improvements but it's it's another weakness on their team and it's not better with a, a kind of like a not a rookie quarterback but a worse quarterback there who can't make things happen yeah uh well not that I, th- not that I thought Darnold was I mean I always kind of thought Dar- I mean Darnold's a better quarterback but you need some pass protection in there I mean, it's, it's just dreadful I need something <laughs> done uh, so we're going to uh, set that game aside. Since we don't have any statistics for it, we might get it for you later. Maybe, maybe not. But um, Not that anyone cares unless unless you really need those points to uh, finish off your week two of uh, in your in your fantasy matchup. Anyways, what we really got to talk about, huge news, is uh, Ben Roethlisberger and Drew Brees. Um, basically, well, Ben Roethlisberger <laughs> is out for the season. Drew Brees could be out for... Uh, four to six weeks with uh, injury to his thumb. I knew it was something bad because he wasn't even testing it out after it happened. So, but I, I will say this, John. O, you know, we really don't appreciate the players. You know, like we sort of just think of our fantasy players as everything's a okay. But when you get one of these, you know, when a major quarterback that got kind of a guy that's kind of been a mainstay, uh, you know, weeks and weeks. When you get two of them like this. We kind of don't appreciate the Matt Ryans, the Philip Rivers, and the Matthew Staffords. And if any of those guys get hurt, it really affects our fantasy teams massively, doesn't it? Yeah, I mean, going into the season, everybody was saying how deep quarterback was. But now without Ben and Breeze, people are fighting over Andy Dalton. It's just a weird, weird turn of events. And it's uh, it's interesting to see how things are going to play out. Yeah, and, and Kev, do you own any of these? Uh, do you have any shares in Ben or Drew? Nope, I I stay away from older quarterbacks just because their upside tends to be lower. I I always go for the younger guys. Right, it just happened to pay off this year. Uh, let's talk about this Ben Roethlisberger first, since he's out for the for the duration. Uh, not looking good for uh, uh, Juju Smith Schuster or the running game. W- where do you take this, uh, Jono? With, uh... Yeah, 
everybody in Pittsburgh is a big downgrade. Um, Juju takes a massive hit. We don't know what Mason Rudolph's going to do. And if he doesn't perform well, then Connor, with his injury and lack of passing game, is going to be uh, is due for a massive downgrade as well. Um, don't really see how Connor's going to be an RB1 for the rest of the season. And Juju's probably got downgrade to a wide receiver too as well. And uh, I guess that obviously includes Kev, the uh, the other wide receivers, James Washington or Mo- well, Moncrief is already uh, looks like he's was already a bust on the way. In any case, yeah, Moncrief is is awful, very very droppable. Um, the only one who I would say might get a boost up is Vance McDonald. I don't know why <clears throat> uh, Mason Rudolph targeted him and a couple times and connected with him for two touchdowns. So. Um, Maybe Vance McDonald will have be revived by Mason Rudolph. Yeah, I should also mention to people that uh, Connor is uh, is apparently okay and probably going to be good to go for Week Three, in whatever capacity. Um, but uh, I think the biggie is is Drew Brees and Teddy Bridgewater. Mm-hmm, it's still he it doesn't look quite like the old Teddy Bridgewater we knew in Minnesota. The growing uh, the growing. Teddy Bridgewater, that we we're, we're starting to see develop in Minnesota. We're not seeing that, are we, Kev? I mean, at least uh, from that I mean, outing, it's it's hard to really judge a guy who's coming in when the starter gets injured midway through the game. But uh, I mean, yeah, I don't expect to see the guy that we saw in Minnesota. To be honest, I just um, just kind of hope Teddy can hold the floor down and at least you know not drain value from Kamara and Michael Thomas. I think all the secondary guys are probably not going to be very good, but. Hopefully he can at least keep those two guys afloat, kind of like Jacoby's doing. Uh, Jacoby Brissett is doing in Indianapolis. Jonah, do we try to move any of these guys? Like, do you try to trade off uh, uh, Alvin Kamara? Do you sort of like have a, try to have a fire sale, but not sell them too cheap, but try to try to get rid of them, or do you just uh, uh, stick? I mean, with Kamara, if somebody's willing to give you, you know, that that first round value for him, sure, if you're afraid of the risk. But I think Kamara is probably going to be. Uh, Teddy's biggest safety valve, just out of pass out of the backfield and just those now the pure RB1 touches that he probably should have been getting anyways. Um, like if Breeze isn't, or Bridgewell's not going to be able to throw, you know, spread the ball like Breeze was, and now they're going to have to focus targets on Kamara and Thomas. If anything, volume could go up for those two, but efficiency is probably going to go down. Yeah, I, I, that's right. Efficiency is going to go down, but the targets go up. I don't think uh, Breeze is the type of quarterback he's he does spread it around like guys like in Tricon Smith and uh, other players. Uh, Jared Cook might be, uh, I don't know, if Teddy Bridgewater is a uh, has a connection with him. We'll have to find out. It's like you say, we need those. And th- that goes for Mason Rudolph as well. They need the uh, time with the first team to find out exactly where things sit as we come into uh, week three. Should be interesting. And... Uh, Lots of guys to pick up with the waiver wire, perhaps, if depending on uh, they they pick somebody you know that's like somebody like Deontay Johnson. You know, you never know. Um, are you guys ready for Antonio Brown? He started, and there was a purposely feeding him in the New England game. In fact, that that Miami game, it, New England came in there. It was almost like, well, this is sort of like this is a good team to sort of practice with. This is it looked they looked like they were up against a practice team. And uh, purposely feeding Antonio Brown, getting him feel for the game. You know, it's really like just toying with the poor old Dolphins. And, uh, uh, you know, what do they beat him? 43 to nothing. Never terrible, awful, but uh, great for fantasy teams. Uh, what's your thoughts, initial thoughts, Kev, on uh, Antonio Brown? No, don't, don't throw this to me. Jonathan, give, give him the thought. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> what, uh, like we discussed pre-show, you don't want to talk about Antonio Brown, Kevin? Come yeah, on. I have no thoughts that haven't already been given. <laughs> yeah, uh, Richard, like you said, they up 20, 20 something, nothing. They just started feeding Brown as many targets as they could. Uh, they force fed him, I think, four straight targets in the red zone, uh, just trying to run different routes. Uh, a couple miscommunications, but you can tell that the chemistry was growing as the game went on. Uh, it's hard to get a real feel of how this will do against the, you know, a real team. Um, but I guess we'll we'll figure things out. I think the real test is going to be in week four against the Bills. Uh, they got a really good defense. I'm looking forward to seeing how the the full uh, Patriots offense works against an actual good defense. Yeah, they gave Edelman the day off. When's the last time you saw Edelman get four targets in a game and he's active? I can't remember the last time. I mean, so they I mean, gave- he got hurt closer to the end of the game too. So I think they're just trying to conserve everybody except Brown. Yeah. 
and yeah. Sony Michelle. But uh, any concerns about Josh Gordon and uh, Edelman's, uh, you know, their work? I mean, we knew there there was going to be a little bit of target, you know, target vampiring, as it were. But Gordon is still still the deep threat. He had Xavier Howard on the entire game, so it wasn't exactly an easy game for him. But he's still the deep threat, and Edelman's always going to have, at this point, if Brown acclimates properly, Edelman's going to have one-on-one matchups in the slot all year. So he, he'll have easy matchups, and he'll be Brady's go-to if he needs a first down. Yeah, but, and uh, it, didn't look, it didn't look like uh, James White was harmed, because I knew that was a bit of a concern for you, was uh, James White especially, but... Uh... No, and no problem with uh, uh, Rex Burkhead and Sony Michel. You know, Burkhead everybody. looks so good this year. He Gen- looks really good. I know it's against you know fourth quarter defenses, but still, he looks really good. Yeah, he does, and uh, very uh, very strong runner. And uh, but uh, everybody seems to be still in the mix. It seems pretty much normal with uh, Antonio Brown, almost except Edelman. Like I say, got kind of got the day off, but uh, I think we'll see Edelman back in there. Um, there's always kind of a witch's brew when it comes to the way Belichick runs things. He likes to, he likes to, he likes to jerk around fantasy teams. You know, he likes to punk us every so often with, uh, you know, stuff. You're going to see like James Devlin. I think they even tried to punch it in with Devlin once. Just, uh, twice. Twice. Yeah. There you go. Uh, Kevin, okay. Then you get the Eagles. Uh, D. Jackson and Alshon injury. What's left, I think, is Aguilar Ertz. Uh, RB Quartet. Uh, well, my, uh, I'm not sure about Corey Clement. He might not be quite ready, but uh, not much left there. Yeah, it's um, Aguilar is going to be a hot pickup this week. I know he had the drop or whatever, but got a ton of targets and he's a big, big play guy. So um, I don't know. I think Alshon is serious. Deshaun doesn't seem serious. So going forward, it looks like it's going to be, you know, Deshaun, uh, Aguilar, and then the two tight ends. It, it, does any of you know what's happening with Dallas Goder? Not her. Uh, Right now. No, I saw he was hurt. I don't know what the extent of it was. No. Yeah, I think he's going to be okay too. So um, there's the, the the new kid, Arcega Whiteside too, uh, is an interesting pickup in deeper leagues, perhaps. Yeah, in super deep leagues. I mean, hopefully, all this means is that the Eagles are going to turn it to their running game, and Jordan Howard hasn't been the most explosive guy. So hopefully, it means that they're going to turn it to Miles Sanders a little bit more, um, because I don't really own any shares of him, but. I'd just rather see, like, you know, a dynamic runner in there. So, um, I mean, Ertz is going to get a bump, and hopefully Miles Sanders does too. Yeah, I really am not happy about how the uh, the Eagles run their uh, backfield. Uh, it just sucks. Um, anybody, anybody could get, to, you know, anybody can get the ball at a, at a given moment for the touchdown. You just don't know who's going to get it. I mean, the touchdown is the thing, and people get those goal line carries. That's the money carry. And you just don't know who's going to get the money carry. Looks sometimes it looks oh it looks like uh, Miles Sanders is going to be the guy. But then you know next next thing you look, what's Sproles doing back there? You know what I mean? So, yeah, it's annoying. I mean, but we knew this about Doug Peterson, and I don't know if you were expecting any different right out of the gate. I'm not. I'm not really sure if you were really watching Eagles games. Yeah, true. Uh, yeah, we know all this, and I think uh, <clears throat> most of our listeners do. They know the frustrations of the uh, of the Eagles' backfield, at least when it comes to uh, you know steady production and those, like I say, the money carry is the goal line carry. Uh, top Sunday performers: Patrick Mahomes, Dalvin Cook, Demarcus Robinson of the Chiefs, and Mark Andrews. You can give a, a whoop, whoop, whoop whoop for that one, Kev. So. <laughs> Yeah, Mark Andrews, one of your one of your uh, season favorite. He was the top tight end this week. Uh, so no, the usual names. Good to see that uh, Aaron Jones getting the ball. Uh, Raheem Mostert being number three. Quite uh, quite a uh, quite a surprise. Uh, any names on this list, Jono, that you uh, that you like and are glad to see uh, finally uh, came up the ranks this week? Uh, glad to see. Or I well. Mean- Surpr- yeah. Glad or surprised? Say Brady. I mean, I could say Brady, but I talked about the Pats already. I can lay off that one. Um, I'm surprised to see two 49ers running backs in the top 10, and neither of them are Matt Breda. Uh, I mean, true. Breda started, the game got out of hand, and then Mostert and Jeff Wilson just took over, scored all the touchdowns, and it was ridiculous. That was, man, as a Breda owner, that hurt. 
Yeah, but I'm actually seeing, I'm actually surprised to see. I don't think this will stand because I think Chubb will take it over. But Peyton Barber uh, made the top 10 as of pending the outcome of uh, uh, Chubb and uh, Le'Veon Bell stats on Monday night. But Peyton Barber uh, made the top 10 just barely. Um, Darren Waller moving up the moving up the charts. I think this. I think he was in the top 10 last week. He made it to number nine as for the tight ends. Uh, lots of lots of big names. Of course, we talked about Nelson Aguilar and uh, Kenny Galladay uh, up there doing it. So uh, all around uh, decent number. I think one one name that I was actually kind of surprised about is actually Russell Wilson. A lot of people were a bit down on Russell Wilson this year, but, you know, Russ, I got to hand it to him. It's not easy to go into uh, – the reason – and I bumped him up in my rest of season rankings. It's not easy to go into Heinz Field. He's the first time he's ever been to Heinz Field in a regular season game. I mean, because the, the Seahawks hadn't been there since 2011. And Russell Wilson went in there and won the game. Good for him. Well done. Okay, granted, the, the, the Pittsburgh is a broken machine at the moment, but still – Pretty good job. It's not easy to, you know, go into Pittsburgh when you haven't been there before. So kind of happy for him. Uh, and uh, oh, Eric Ebron, uh, the the man who's addicted to touchdowns, uh, scored a TD. So I think I know Eric Ebron's a, a touchdown dependent, but if he's going to get him, I think Eric Ebron's a good guy to have on your bench as an extra tight end. So that's my thoughts. Kev, uh, give your thoughts on this uh, on our list. Anybody that sticks out for you? Or uh, yeah, you'd like uh, to comment I'm, on? Go ahead. What was that? Uh, go ahead and comment. Comment uh, away. Um, um, yeah, just some guys that we drafted high. You know, finally kind of getting on track. Aaron Jones is a guy I was happy to see do well. Um, Zeke is going to be Zeke, and I'm glad to see that. Of course, uh, a lot of the receive. I mean, Julio Jones exploded, but a lot of the receivers you're seeing at the top of the list are guys who are drafted in like the wide receiver 30s, which is um, kind of gives more credence to the, to the fact that, you know, you can always find a wide receiver week by week almost, and they're going to bust out like randomly. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's a, it was a pretty good week, I guess. I don't know. I thought it was you had a really good week or your guy had a really bad week. Kind of ugly, to be honest. Um, someone interesting is uh, Josh Allen. Like, I know he had a cake matchup, but I mean, with the running and he's going to throw for, it looks like, at least 250 yards and probably a touchdown every week. He's someone who's moving up my wide, uh, my quarterback rankings, especially with a couple of the old guys going down. Yeah, um, I think people uh, who uh, own Lamar Jackson are just delighted. He's really come into his own, uh, really doing well. And Dak Prescott, he's keeping it going as well. So everyone's happy, and especially it's good for the receivers, and it brings all those receivers. I think Gallup's hurt. Uh, he's going to be out for uh, two to four weeks. They say it'll be – they expect him back quickly, so – but Dak, Dak Prescott, he'll still have all his weapons. He'll be doing well. And, uh, yeah, and Tom Brady, it just goes to show you, Tom Brady, look at all the weapons he got. He's a f- number four quarterback this week. So, And as you say, uh, uh, Kev, Vance McDonald, fourth on the list this week, got, got got a couple of touchdowns from Mason Rudolph. So that is something to keep an eye on. Uh, okay. Uh, now it's uh, the other side of it, uh, panic button time. Uh we each took uh, two players that were kind of got the panic button on. You might even want to drop them. Um, Anthony Miller uh, got one target in week one and uh, didn't see much else. I think he got another target this week. It might have gotten a catch. I can't remember. I was going through the rankings and uh, and I thought, <gasps> another bad week for Anthony Miller. And I was kind of propping him up. I was a bit high on Anthony Miller this year, uh, but... Uh, the problem seems to be where the ball comes from. Mitch Trubisky is not very uh, good this year. He's having a he's off to a very very slow start, and it's hurting Anthony Miller badly. So Anthony Miller is on my panic button. Any comments on that, uh, Kev? No, I mean I mentioned in my uh, column last week that he was a potential drop. Um, we thought they might be easing him in because he was he missed a lot of training camp with his shoulder injury, but. Turns out that Mitch just thinks, and so does Anthony Miller. So uh, fair to, I would probably drop him in ten and twelve team. Maybe. And uh, John, will uh, give us your pick or and comment on Anthony Miller if you want. But uh, move on with your first panic <laughs> button. Yeah, um, my first panic button would be, I guess, the obvious one that everybody's been talking about. Uh, Cam Newton. He was drafted most of the time inside the top ten or just on the border of it of quarterbacks, and he's looked terrible. Whether he's not healthy or the Panthers' offense is 
you know, are the are the Panthers are just not letting him run or what have you. But he looks bad. Um, he leads the league or in, I guess, percentage of uncatchable passes. Uh, there were a few times in Thursday's game where either DJ Moore or Curtis Samuel were wide open and Cam was not even in the same zip code. Uh, he looks bad. And if you can trade him for anything at this point, do it because you're going to have to drop him within a couple weeks. He, I don't see this improving at all. Yeah, we already mentioned uh, the uh, possibility that he could be switched out um, for he could have an injury of his own. Like there's something alien ailing him like uh, Ben Roethlisberger was. Apparently Ben Roethlisberger's uh, elbow injury was something that had been bothering him uh, a week previously. I don't know, it might be something with Cam that, uh, that we're going to have to keep on. What do you think, Kev? Yeah, I don't know. It's looking shaky. It looks like something's wrong with him, to be honest. Like he's airmailing a lot of throws. He's getting up looking gimpy. He just doesn't look into the game, really. Um, I don't know. I, 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 he, he's, I think he did this last year. So there's a chance that he bounces back, but I'm definitely looking for, like, I was willing to give him a benefit of the doubt this week against Tampa, but next week, I'm not even sure who they're playing, but I'm definitely looking for an alternative. Okay. Well, give us your, uh, pa- who's on your panic button. Uh, so a guy who is in my panic watch is someone who played in that game. We just mentioned OJ Howard. Um, I think zero targets last week, definitely zero fantasy points. Uh, the worry going into the season was that Arians wasn't going to reuse his tight ends because he doesn't have a history of it. We all thought, you know, with OJ Howard, like he's such a different level of tight end that Arians has ever had that he was going to use him. And we just haven't seen that usage yet. So uh, it's a little concerning. But next week they've got um, they've got the Giants. So that's always, you know, recipe for what's the term I'm looking for? I don't know. It's it's good. It's good. Um, and It's a matchup. It's a matchup, a dream matchup for him. If he's yeah, going to yeah. come out of it, it'll be that game. Yeah, definitely. So um, I wouldn't give up on him yet. Probably try to, I don't know, try to buy him low if you can, maybe. Uh, I think maybe he could bounce back. James looked a lot better this game than he did the first game. So um, there's still some potential there, um, but it's definitely worrisome. Yeah, it was uh, uh, definitely a fire sale there. What Do you have you do you own any shares, John, on, on of OJ Howard? No, <clears throat> not in any of my leagues. He always went a little bit too high for, for, for my tastes. Yeah, and no, I, uh, I, I've uh, sunk in a bit of, even in our own league, I, uh, I put in the shares, but I mean, sort of expect, I mean, I see a good player. Like, I like good players, and I, I look at, uh, OJ Howard, and I say, I see a good player there. But when he's not getting the usage, he's just getting wasted on, uh, in the Arians offense. I mean, I should have listened, but do I listen? No. I go, I go ahead. No, I went with, oh, well, Arians hasn't, I went with that argument. Which was the wrong argument. So um, my advice to people would be to uh, try to move on from them this week. Try to get what you can because um, what if you've got another tight end of no? If you've got like Darren Waller, if you picked up somebody else, it's half decent. Um, you're not you're not going to be any worse if you can get something for OJ Howard because if you if you put if you move them on and then all of a sudden you know you smack yourself in the nose, you, you know then. Okay, it happens, but um, at this point, eh, I don't think it's that risky to move on from him, obviously. But my other uh, concern, and a lot of people were high on him as a as a late pick, and that's Dante Pettis. He is absolutely invisible. Uh, I don't know whether Mike Shanahan doesn't like him. He played in the fourth quarter of the preseason, and he's still getting nothing from Jimmy Garoppolo. Uh, the guys that are getting the targets is like, uh, Marquise Goodwin is back in the good graces and, and Debo Samuel is in there. And of course you got, you know, Josh, uh, uh, George Kittle are all, everybody's getting something except for Dante Pettis. He's the, he's the, he's the cold man outside Kev. Yeah. Zero targets on 35 routes run. Um, Debo got a lot of work. Marquise Goodwin got three targets or three catches on a, on a few more targets. Um, but looks like that team is going to be mostly run heavy. They just, they've still got Kittle there. Pettis, like you said, looks like the odd man out. He's a safe drop, too. Uh, John, any thoughts on Dante Pettis? And uh, give us your next one. Yeah, I mean, Pettis, like you guys have already said, he's the odd man out. He's not been targeted, and he just doesn't look like he's going to be part of that offense. Uh, my next panic guy is going to be Devonta Freeman. Uh, through two games, uh, he's been pretty bad. Last uh, last night in the Monday Nighter, his I guess week was saved due to some receiving yards. I think he had 42 yards on three catches. It really saved his day, but Otherwise, once again, uh, couldn't get anything going on the ground. 
I know a lot of people are saying that it's the you know the Falcons' use of him or their O line, but those are all things that can affect him. And right now, he looks like uh, it, it's it's very very concerning. He just can't get anything going. He's hitting no holes, and Ido Smith is rushing and looks a lot better than he does. It's not a great situation for him, and I don't know how much longer I guess owners can wait before they have to make a move on him. You know, that's a funny thing. You know, whenever uh, when I was doing mock drafting, <clears throat> I would never draft. Uh, I would never draft Devonta Freeman, but I was always looking for Ido Smith. At, you know, at the end of drafts, so I'd I wouldn't I didn't want to draft Devonta Freeman early, but I would quite happily pick up Edo Smith. I don't know why. It's just a I don't know. Was that ever happening with you, Kev? Yeah, I mean, Devonta Freeman is not a guy I was high on. He's just a small running back coming off an injury, um, kind of reaching the not. He's twenty seven this year. I think turning twenty eight, so not old, but. Uh, those are the type of backs that I tend to avoid, even if they're like embedded in good offenses. So I have a couple of shares like you of Ito. Uh, stayed off Devontae Freeman, though. And uh, who's your uh, panic button? Yeah, my second panic button guy is Duke Johnson. Um, surprisingly, to much to my surprise, Carlos Hyde is, is taking over that backfield. Uh, 20 carries for Hyde last week, only six for Duke Johnson. Not a lot of passing targets as well. So. It's uh, it's concerning. It's definitely concerning for people like me who faded or who just completely did not believe in Carlos Hyde. Um, Carlos Hyde might be this year's Eric Ebron for me. Um, I don't know. I, I I wonder if in games that are you know where the total goes over twenty eight points, that Du Johnson is going to get a little more work. But uh, nothing I've seen over the first two weeks is is particularly. Uh, yeah, you know what? I think if you strip the names off their backs and put. Put Miller and Blue on on both those players. That's what you'd have. That's what it's almost what it's like. If you put Lamar Miller and 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 Alfred Blue uh, names on their backs, and, and if it wasn't Carl, you, you know, you'd swear you'd be watching Miller and Blue. It's almost exactly what it is. It's like Duke Johnson has become turned into Alfred Blue. I I don't know, why, but Carlos Hyde. I mean, you just if you just ignore the name, you'd think you were watching uh, uh, the old Lamar Miller offense you know so i guess the texans got what they wanted they got the ideal replacement they got another i mean Hyde's completely different than miller miller's miller's completely different runner but the i'm talking about the way the timeshare is it's not looking it's not hooking wholesome could be could be game script what do you think Jono? no i mean two straight weeks now that uh that hides look good uh, at this point you can't really deny him you can't really keep saying that oh he got lucky he got lucky i think at this point you have to add him as at the very least a bench running back that's going to get goal line carries and looks like the old, you know, the old Lamar Miller offense, but if it works, it works. Yeah. Uh, so why don't you start us off, John, with uh, moving on up. <clears throat> My moving on up is straight out of 1994. Uh, Frank Gore with Devin Singletary's injury. Um, Gore is going to take over as the lead back in Buffalo. He's already got the goal line carries and he already dominated the snap count uh, this week, even before Singletary got hurt. Uh, Gore is less well, less efficient than Singletary was with his touches, but again, he had the carries, he dominated the snap count, and Gore is looking like the the running back to own if you want volume in Buffalo. Yeah, uh, Kev, thoughts? Frank Gore? I don't know. Frank Gore never dies. I mean, the guy is just gonna be. In, I mean, his son, I think, is a just transferred to IU. He's playing with Lane Kiffins, so um, he'll be in the league in three years. And oh, Frank not Gore, another one. Yeah, Frank Gore will probably be uh backing him up or something so look forward to that yeah i don't know frank gore is just he's thanos he's inevitable you're just gonna see him every week i will i will say this you know when i when uh frank gore went to uh went to buffalo i thought oh no uh because whenever frank gore goes there, you know he's gonna produce they, they're gonna use him they, and uh i will say this though i mean if you've if you're if you're a guy, if you're one of these fantasy guys, well, oh, I'm gonna pick up Frank. You're always right. You're always gonna be right. If you pick up Frank Gore, you're you can almost guarantee you're gonna be right because everyone says that Frank Gore, uh, the wash is coming. The wash is coming, and the wash never comes. The wash never comes. That's a Kev. Uh, when? 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 <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I mean, he's just gonna be four yards per carry until he feels like hanging out. Yeah. Oh, yeah, good on him though. I mean, he's Hall of Fame, and you know, got, got going to be a Hall of Famer and through the you know the back way. But uh, I mean, I liked him when he was in San Francisco. I would draft him when he was in San Francisco. 
you know, he was a regular, you know, drafting him you know, RB2. He was just your common RB2. You'd pick him up, you know, and I was happily picking up. But, you know, there comes a time when you start thinking, well, you know, I mean, this has been going on for how long? Like the last five years? <laughs> I'm thinking, I don't know. Well, anyways, uh, my guy, we, uh, I was just spe- speaking about, and it's Debo Samuel. I think Debo Samuel is going to, he is, he is clearly now the number two wide receiver, and maybe even the number one wide receiver in San Francisco. Um, he's picked up in the offense, and, and, uh, you know, of course, I mentioned Dante Pettis. This is the opposite guy. Um, he's doing it. If you picked him up late in your draft, You'll, you'll be very happy because now you can start using him in uh, in your flex, and uh, it's it's perfect because I think and and as time goes on, he might even uh, move into WR two territory. So we'll have to wait and see. But uh, Debo Samuel looks really good, uh, Jono. Yeah, definitely. I mean, he <clears throat> a couple of weeks now. He well, I guess the week one he had sixty snaps. He, he led the receivers. And then last week he had 29, but don't worry about the big drop because, you know, he sat half the game because of that blowout. Uh, like you said, he looks like the best, uh, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> Sorry, guys. Looks like the best receiver uh, out there for the 49ers. And yeah, definitely a good pickup for sure. Who you got for uh, who's moving? Yep, my guy is uh, Demarcus Robinson. Oh, oh we, oh, we, we already, uh, uh, Kevin had us an out of turn. Oh, well, finish okay. yours up anyway, Jono. We'll let Kev, All right. Kev have, a, have a double feature. Double dip? Yeah. All right. Well, Demarcus Robinson, we touched on him a little bit already. Um, in that Chiefs offense last week, he had a great game. He had six uh, six targets, caught six passes for 172 yards and two touchdowns. Without Tyree Kill in the lineup, <laughs> Robinson is looking like the, the main deep ball guy. Um, the problem in Kansas City, of course, you have the incredible offense, but any of those three receivers, either Robinson, Sammy Watkins, or Michael Hardman, could be, you know, the guy every week, as me and Kevin were talking about before the show. And he, of course, you're not expecting a big game every game, but there will be opportunities. And of course, with Mahomes, anything is possible. Uh, and, uh, you know, 50 plus yard touchdown any given week is never out of the question. Yeah. And, uh, Michael Hardman, you mentioned, yeah, I like, uh, I like that player too. Uh, I think one thing about the Chiefs, I think if you pick up any asset on the Chiefs in the passing game, you're, you're doing pretty good. So, uh, it's, I think that's, I think that's basically, is, I basically says it all. Um, Kev, any thoughts on that? And give us a, a pair of, uh, moving on up players for you. Yeah. Hard to argue with anyone embedded in that Chiefs offense. Um, it's Mahomes is just that good. I don't even know who Mark Demarcus Robinson is. I don't know anything about his draft capital. I don't know anything about who was he on the team last year. I don't even know what his number is. All I know is eleven. Mahomes is a god, so he's gonna be good. Um, my two moving on up guys, pair of receivers. First one is Christian Kirk. Um, had a pretty rough showing week one, four catches on twelve targets, but bounced back with <laughs> catches on eight targets against a pretty rough Baltimore defense. So I think that air raid offense is going to work. Um, they're struggling to score in the red zone. They kick five field goals or three field goals from inside the five yard line, which is just hilarious. But um, they're going to go down up and down the field. And so I think Christian Kirk is going, he's playing every snap. Um, he saw 20 targets in two games. So hard to argue with that. Uh, on my other guy is Emmanuel Sanders, who probably one of the better bounce back scorers of this season. Um, he's up to 16 catches on 20 targets this season. Uh, got a hundred, what is it? What is this? 184 yards and two touchdowns in two games. Um, I mean, Joe Flacco is, I mean, that offense is, is really, really ugly to watch, but Sanders is getting his, you know, he's playing well and coming off that Achilles, he's pretty surprising, but, um, he's someone who's becoming a must start every week. Yeah. Uh, a very good player, but you mentioned Christian Kirk. I, I am noticing, I am noticing that Kyler Murray is getting better every game. He's a little bit better. It was a little bit better week two. And I expect him to be getting a little bit better in week three. This is what I like to see in a quarterback. I, I don't like, you know, I don't necessarily have to see a, a a rookie quarterback just come out and just light it up right away. You don't, you rarely see that. I mean, yeah, okay, maybe Baker did that, but but the quarterback that that you know gets a little bit better with every game. I'm seeing that with Kyler Murray for the, through the first two games. I'm I'm actually excited to see. Uh, to watch this kid grow, he's he's doing a pretty good job, and uh, he's finding his targets. He likes uh, uh, Larry Fitzgerald, but uh, but uh, you know he's actually throwing around. I even uh, that Keyshawn Johnson guy, um, he interests me too as a 
you know, as, I think there's a there's a best ball guy for you if you want one. Uh, so I don't know. Um, I really like how this offense is moving along, don't you, uh, Jono? Yeah, I mean, like you said, Kyler's getting better. Um, he gets better deeper into games, uh, from what I've noticed. But it's sad to see him throw so many passes. I think he's he hit fifty in the first week and he hit forty something the second week. See him throw that many times is is great. Offense is exciting and. Hopefully they can start scoring from inside the five. Uh, Kevin, I didn't yeah. realize that they had done that so many times. That's weird, but hopefully they can figure that out. Just hilarious. And I'll go with a, my my last uh, moving on up player is, uh, this is kind of a boring one, but he was the number three tight end uh, this week. Will Disley of uh, of the Seahawks. I think he's a good, uh, a lot. there has been a little bit of buzz about picking him up and stuff like that, but I think he'll be on the... Uh, is he uh is he on your waiver list, Jono? Yeah, uh, I have him on the on the list here. Of course, my the waiver wire article is only allowed uh thirty five percent owned and under. Right. And when you go to thirty five percent owned and under tight ends, you're looking at Jason Witten, Will Disley, and Tyler Eifert. And it's rough. It's a it's a rough landscape there for tight ends. But he said Disley. He had five targets last week uh, or this week, two touchdowns. Uh, he started off last year hot, had the unfortunate injury, and as he works his way back, he could be one of or the red zone target for Russell Wilson. Yeah. Okay. We're into uh, our show moves along a lot differently than it than it used to. Uh, we're into final final thoughts already uh, for uh, week uh, for week two and the week ahead. Uh, what are you looking for, uh, Kev? This this coming week. Oh, Anybody definitely. That- not even a homer thing. I'd look forward to it, even if my team wasn't playing. But Ravens at Chiefs, uh, one of the morning games, that's going to be hopefully a shootout um, between two really good quarterbacks. Um, Just because you said that, it's going to end up like 13-10 or something. Yeah, I spent all Sunday morning telling uh, people on Twitter that uh, Saints-Rams was going to be a shootout, and then it was not. So let's hope that doesn't happen, but... Please don't jinx it. I need to see these two just go at it. <laughs> I'm hoping for, you know, uh, Chiefs Rams part two from last year. But if it doesn't happen, um, don't blame me. Blame Jonathan for bringing it. Up. I, I mean, I'm, just, I'm being realistic. I'm not trying to jinx it. There's, there's, there's reasons to suspect that it won't be that kind of shootout. Like the Chiefs defense has been better than expected. The Ravens defense is stingy. So I could see it ending something like 27, 24, 27, 21, something like that. Uh, speaking of uh, finals, we have a final in the uh, uh, Cleveland Browns and Jets game, uh, twenty-three to three for for Cleveland. So nothing changed throughout the fourth quarter. Um, Odell Beckham six receptions, one hundred and sixty-one yards and a touchdown, and Chubb sixty-two yards on the ground and a touchdown and four receptions for thirty-six yards. So um, nice day for the uh, Browns. Uh, I don't know what uh, Le'Veon Bell had. I don't have, I don't have their stats here. But uh, yeah, good day uh, for that. Um, pickups for me. I think some some interesting pickups. I think a pickup that you want to get if he isn't already taken is Jalen Samuels. Um, I think there's going to be a little bit of a shakeup on Pittsburgh this week. Um, I think Mike Tomlin is going to uh, um, have a good word with his team and say we're going to readjust he's never gone i don't think uh, mike tallman has had a losing season with pittsburgh and i don't think he wants to have his first one this year so i think there's going to be a shake-up in pittsburgh with uh, ben roethlisberger out so i don't know i i think there's a lot of pittsburgh this is why i mentioned deontay thompson you know he might even want to think about picking up benny snow he's down the down the hay but uh, uh he's going quite deeper but um, but I, I mean, you really got to look at this office like Vance McDonald. And so this week, I, I'm really very interested in what Pittsburgh is going to be up to for their, for their next outing. Um, not sure who they play. Does anybody have a uh, schedule up there for who they're playing? I'm way behind. Steelers? Yeah. The Niners. Steelers and Niners. Well, that's, uh, is it, uh, at Heinz or is it, uh, it's at Levi. All right. Yeah. So, so they're going to be bringing it on the road. Uh, I don't know what kind of, it's, gee, what an interesting game that's going to be. Is that a, uh, that'll be an afternoon game too. Hmm. So yep. that'll be something. <coughs> actually, I've got the, uh, actually I got the matchup for, for next week right here. Quickly, if I can bring them up. You know, you talked about the, uh, Tampa Bay and the Giants. That could be something. That's something we haven't talked about too is, uh, Daniel Jones, uh, Jono. Any thoughts on whether, you know, we're going to see him? 
Because uh, Shermer, mean, Shermer didn't mention that there's going to be he hasn't mentioned the starter yet. I don't see if I don't see the point in putting Daniel Jones in two games into the season or three games into the season. I mean, you, you come in knowing that he's going to have to learn, and then after two games where losing wasn't really Eli's fault, you're going to put him in. Yeah, it doesn't make sense. Well, Just scrounge for headlines. No, but well, I'll, all right, okay, Kev, do we believe those headlines? I mean, do we? Are you not reading any tea leaves there? Um, I don't know what the headlines say, but I'm with Jonathan. I don't think it's, I think it's too early. I mean, are you going to put him in without any receivers out there? I mean, he's got Cody Latimer and Benny Fowler running routes. Like, uh, uh, what's the point of putting him in right now? But why, why would Shermer, uh, refuse to name the starter? I mean, usually coaches come out and say, Eli's our starter. Uh, that's, uh, you know, you know what I mean? I don't think it would be a good idea to put Daniel Jones out there considering that there's really, Who's he gonna throw to now? Like Cody Latimer? I mean, that's exactly what I'm saying. So I don't, I don't think you want to throw your quarterback into the fire like that. No. And I, so like you just leave it up to grabs because yeah, it's true. He doesn't have to say who's starting. Like why does he have to make the decision on Sunday night or Monday morning? You can make that decision on Thursday. And I, yeah, so I don't th- really think uh, the Giants woes or or anything that's uh, the fault of uh, Eli. I just think Eli's got Eli's got no weapons there. He's got Evan Ingram, uh, well, and Sterling Shepard hopefully comes back, but Cody Latimer and Benny Fowler? I mean, come on. Uh, they, they, they need some guys. I mean, and Saquon Barkley is just doing, it. and that's another thing too. Throughout <laughs> all this stuff that's going on with the Giants, Saquon Barkley looks great. Like, a, just totally, you know, it's, it's kind of like how Dalvin Cook is with, with Minnesota, cause, uh, Kirk Cousins, it just looks lousy. Looks like a really lousy quarterback to me. Uh, sorry, Minnesota fans, but he really does. It's true. And even I think even Minnesota fans know that, don't you? You think so, Jono? Yeah, he, he, has, he hasn't looked good. And based on what I've seen on Twitter, uh, Viking fans are not happy. No, and, and I'm not happy because I have Diggs in, uh, in a couple of leagues. And I was very high on Diggs because I, you know, actually I'm, I'm like, I like both those receivers and you know, Diggs got saved by a, by a touchdown. I mean, I think he was targeted seven times and he got, and he caught one pass, but the passes were awful. I mean, it wasn't, wasn't that Diggs couldn't, you know, Diggs was targeted all right, but you know, I mean, it's, I think it's unfair that a target counts. It, it really skews statistics because uh, when a player is targeted and it's 10 feet over his head, it still counts as a target. It doesn't make sense. I, I don't know. They got to fix that stat because that's, I mean, yeah, he's looking for you, but sometimes the quarterback's throwing towards you just to uh, get rid of the ball, so it was in the direction of your player. You know what I mean, Kev? Yeah, I mean, there's PFF probably has something for it, like adjusted targets or something. I should do. Uh, just looking at some of these games, New York Jets at New England. These Jets play. You know, New England, like another, another game. New England gets the Jets. Uh, John O. Oh, their start of season schedule is awesome. Just, it's amazing. They get the Jets, then the Bills, then the Redskins, then the Giants, then the Jets again. Oh, it's a great schedule to start the year. Uh, there's just no stopping them. And look at look at what Kansas City get. They get Baltimore. And uh, actually, what, look what Baltimore gets. Look what Kansas City get. They get each other, which is you know that's a tough game for them. <laughs> both both those contenders have to play. You know, New England doesn't have to play them. Uh, they got nobody tough, and they just. It's just every everything else below below uh, New England in that division is just I don't know. It's, the Bills are good. The Bills are the, the, okay. The, 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 the Bills have been pretty good. Their defense has proven to be really really good. They're Formidable okay. Formidable defense. Actually, I, I do like Josh Allen. I think he's he's a growing uh, quarterback. I like I like see, watching him. He's he's getting better uh, at uh, at increments. But they're just okay, John O. They're just okay. They're, they've got a better defense than, they're probably the second best team in that division, long distance away. They're 2-0, and so they beat the Giants handily. Uh, we've got Atlanta at Indianapolis. Uh, Colts looking all right. No worries with, uh, T.Y. Hilton. He's, he's doing okay, and Marlon Mack's doing fine. Um, uh, Cincinnati at Buffalo. Uh, I guess this is, this is the Buffalo game, of course, that, you know, we were just talking about them. Kev, any thoughts about Josh Allen and Buffalo or, or Cincinnati? Yeah, I think he's, for fantasy purposes, good. For regular, real quarterbacking purposes, not as good. So, um, yeah, we'll see. Houston at Chargers, Jono. 
Um, this one should be a better, uh, better high, or I guess a higher scoring game than either team's. You know, week two, both teams struggle to score, and this one should be a better game. Uh, Watson versus Rivers. I, I'm I'm looking forward to it. Saints at Seattle. Um, Seattle. What a lucky team. They come in there, and now they get another. They get another broken quarterback uh, situation. So they won't. They don't want to have any. Uh, well, <clears throat> I guess they'll have to uh, game plan. This time they'll have to game plan for a, a backup quarterback. So we we'll have to play them right in in mid game, but. Uh, Kind of a little bit of luck on the schedule for uh, the Seattle defense. In any case, I look for them. I look for Seattle to win that one. Um, Cav Pittsburgh at San Francisco. We just talked about that. Uh, Denver's at Green Bay. Uh, any thoughts on Denver Green Bay, Cav? I will not be watching. Um, I watched. I had money on the the Bears, or I had money on the Broncos against the Bears. And somehow they gave that away game, and I was disgusted watching the whole time. So not particularly interested in watching Denver again. Um, hopefully the Packers can keep it up again, though. Well, then you'll watch. Then you'll watch Miami at Dallas. I might just sleep in. I'm really upset if Ga- and Gallup's out of that game, and I own Gallup in a couple of leagues. I like Gallup this year, and he's out for the Miami game. Ugh. Sorry, uh, owners of Gallup, you you're gonna miss out on it. I mean, but- are these the morning games? Uh, what this is, this is a morning game. Yeah. Morning I know. Game. Uh, yeah, it is actually, it's a morning game. Miami at Dallas. It's an early game. And, uh, just think Miami at Dallas. Can you imagine? I think if you own Amari Cooper for Miami at Dallas, whew. <coughs> Dallas is favored by 21. how much? 21. Oh, yeah. wow. <laughs> I don't know if you start any, uh, I, I mean, People are talking about uh, a trade for uh, Kenyon Drake. I don't know if he'll, he will get traded, but I, I really see no value in getting Balaj. It's just really, I don't know. I, I really want to stay away. There's from no that value because. in Balaj. Balaj is a terrible, a terrible running back. There, there is absolutely no value in him. No, not. No. Hey, Mark Walton, though. Keep an eye out. For who? Mark Walton. Mark Walton. He's on yeah. the. I thought I thought he was on uh, Cincinnati. Did he get? He is now on the Dolphins, uh, uh, and he, he was more of a kid than Milaj last week. I, I thought I thought the guy that that I thought it was Miles Gaskin was the guy that was people were sort of like keep your eye on sort of guy. He was a rookie, but I'm not sure why he's not getting touched. I think he was inactive. Uh, Detroit at Philadelphia. That should be an interesting one. Oakland at Minnesota, and the late games: uh, Giants at Tampa Bay. Of course, you mentioned Carolina at Arizona. Another uh, that'll wrap up the week, and then uh, Thursday night football. Of course, Tennessee at Ta- Jacksonville. Sunday night football: Rams at Cle- Rams at Cleveland. That's Sunday night, and uh, Monday night football: Chicago at Washington. Ugh, another dreadful game. Ugh. What is it about Monday night football? It's just these cra- old crapo game. It's two weeks in a row. I think they could get a decent matchup for Mo- Monday nights. Let's jump the shark. <laughs> Anyways, um, I don't really have anything uh, else to say. Have you guys had anything to uh, add as we end I up think the podcast? We're good. Are we good? Kev, are we good? Yeah, I think so. Let's save it uh, for Twitter. All right, yeah. Make sure you do visit us on Twitter. Our Twitter handles are on the, uh, the page where you find uh, the article, plus the entire list of um, the top players of the week i'll have that updated with the uh if uh odell beckham jr and nick chubb got in there or Le'Veon bell got in there we'll I'll, I'll update that and have it on the sheet for everybody to see so for uh kevin Huo and jonathan chan i'm richard seville of fantasy edge uh be, be sure to uh check us out next week and also aj applegarth and uh joe bond on the uh, fantasy six pack hour plus there are other um there are other podcasts on the site of, of interest. We've got a whole bunch of podcasts on there, don't we? So be sure to check those out. Plus, Kevin's drop article and Jono's waiver pickups. Uh, good luck with your waivers this week, everybody. Hope you get what you want. Uh, we'll see you next week on the Fantasy Edge. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.